A lot of you showed a great amount of love for the video on Sir's meshes and Istio, and quite a few of you asked for a more hands-on follow-up. Let's do just that. Hey guys, it's me, your tech bot, and in this video of Backstage with Architects, we'll finally get started with Istio. Before we start, notice I said Backstage with Architects. The thing is, we just crossed the 1000 subscriber mark, and we are super grateful for all your love and support. And it's a we now. The Your Tech Bud Codes team is growing in size and it's about time we rename the channel to represent who we really are. A bunch of architects sharing their opinion off stage. Now without further ado, let's dive into Istio. Istio is a huge beast to cover. So we'll just focus on the traffic management aspect for the REST APIs today. In the previous video, we saw how Istio aims to be transparent. It injects a proxy inside each one of our pods to intercept all communication. What this implies is that we still need a deployment object to start our pods and a service object to create a network identity or domain name for us. Istio will not be replacing this. However, Istio does give us two new CRDs, a virtual service and a destination rule to control the behavior of these proxies. Don't ask me why they did that. I'm as confused as you are. We will typically have one virtual service and one destination rule for each one of our apps. Sort of. But we could have hundreds of apps in a single cluster. So how do we identify which virtual service is for which app? Well, we filter virtual services the same way we do it in Kubernetes, by using the service domain. If you have a look at the specifications of a virtual service or even a destination rule for that matter, you see that the first thing it accepts is a list of hosts this config is applicable to. This is where you will put your service domain name. We can't really use labels here. Tell me why in the comments below. The way it works is, a single proxy will have a copy of all the virtual services present in the cluster. Whenever its app makes an outbound request, it tries to match which virtual service is applicable based on the domain name of the request. I think I just answered the previous question myself. Hmm. Oops. The next field in a virtual service is an array of routes. If you have worked with API gateways before, you know that a route can have three parts. The first one is to match or select which incoming request the route is applicable to. We can select a route based on the request URL, headers, or even the request body. Okay, most API gateways don't select routes based on the request body but it is possible to do it in theory. Not specifying the match fields means you want the route to catch all requests. Every virtual service should have at least one such default route. It's important to capture requests no other routes have handled. The default route is also the place where traffic splitting for canary deployments happen. The second field in a route is the destination. This is where you describe the host and port of the application you want to forward the request to. Notice that Istio supports specifying an array of destinations. This is where we step into the realm of traffic splitting. We can specify multiple destinations and attach a weight to each one of them. The weight represents the percentage of traffic that should be forwarded to that destination. In this case, we are forwarding 90% traffic to the stable version and the rest is going to the canary version. I have made a video dedicated to canary deployments using Istio. Feel free to check that out if you want to know more. Also, subscribe and like this video while you're at it. It really helps. The last set of fields in a route is to describe the route's behavior. In this section, we configure things like the request timeout and retries. In Istio, the configuration dealing with the behavior is divided between the virtual service and the destination rule. The destination rule contains transport level policies to apply after the routing decision is taken. You know, settings like circuit breaking, load balancing, and connection pooling. The destination rule is also responsible for configuring MTLS. The rest of the behavior config is in the virtual service. Some important ones are automatic request retries, timeouts, and URL rewrites. Now in the traffic splitting example, we saw how we can split traffic between multiple service hosts. In this case, we will have to make three Kubernetes service objects. One common service which all the other apps will be using and two internal ones which we will split traffic between. Now, if you're like me and find creating multiple service objects annoying, you can use the subset field when specifying destinations. So our new config will look something like this. 
Notice how the destination service names are exactly the same now? The way we can select between various versions is by using the subset which is defined by a destination rule. Over at the destination rule for that service, we can see that we have specified multiple subsets. Each subset selects which pods we want to forward the traffic to for that subset. I know this can be a bit complicated, but it offers the ability to create new subsets on the fly. When not using subsets, we would have to create a new Kubernetes service objects for each new version we want to deploy. All what we have discussed till now has to do with service to service communication. We haven't yet spoken about how we can communicate with applications outside our mesh. The thing is, each app inside the mesh can accept incoming traffic from the external world by default. All you need to do is expose your app with a Kubernetes service of type load balancer. The same holds true for making calls to the outside world. You don't really have to configure Istio to make all of this work. Having said that, one important advantage of using a service mesh is security. And allowing free flow of traffic in and out of your cluster isn't exactly what one may call secure. For this reason, Istio gives us ingress and egress gateways to secure all incoming and outgoing traffic. The ingress gateway runs on port 80 and 443 by default. It also creates a Kubernetes service object of type load balancer. You can change all of this while installing Istio. Whenever we want to expose an application to the external world via Istio, we need to create a gateway object. We don't really need to get into the specifics of this object for now. What's important is the list of hosts we want this gateway to listen for. We can also use a wildcard to listen for all hosts. Next, we need to define the routes for the requests that come in via this gateway. We do this by creating, you guessed it, a virtual service. This virtual service is exactly the same as we saw earlier with one tiny difference. There is one additional gateways field added. Here we put in the name of the gateway we just created in the previous step. Specifying a gateway means that the virtual service won't be applicable for traffic originating from within the mesh. It's only for the traffic coming in via the gateway. This allows you to define different routes for traffic originating from inside and outside the mesh, which is a good thing. If you want to use the same virtual service for both scenarios, just add mesh as a gateway. Also make sure you add the internal service host in the list of host names. This will configure the virtual service to be used for all kinds of traffic. God, I just realized that I've been going on and on for quite a while now. Hey Zishon, do you think we'll be able to fit all of this in 10 minutes? I don't think we can. Let's end here. I know I promised all of you a practical tutorial, but I couldn't deliver. I'm sorry. Istio is a beast and I guess we'll just have to divide this into multiple videos. Till then, like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bot. You're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.